I am finishing up these mugs. They are just about ready to get loaded into the kiln, which will happen on a separate live coming up soon. So you might've missed it, but there's a video somewhere. So I'm finishing up all the stuff that's on this table here. I wanna do a little pan. Show the people what's gonna happen here. And there's a couple bowls around. So with these mugs, I've already striped them with one flexi color. And this is my second flexi color, which is a Cone 6 Electric Tenmoku. Some of you might know that I'm up for glaze swapping single recipes if you happen to have a glaze that I would like. Um, so just putting that out there that I've got this glaze swap concept going on here. So I'll, I just exhale so I can control and put the stripe where I want it to be, which is overlapping with the other stuff that's there. And I just always exhale where I do when I do just about anything in the studio. Siblets. I'm working on my, I'm working on my, my talking. So I don't hiss my S's so much. It's great. So cool to focus on our habits and consciously change them if we can. Now some of them I'll do something like a little different. So like this one, I'm going to just looking to see if there's another one around that I haven't done this yet, these ones. So I have to make a decision with these. Oh, I did, I did. I put green dots on the outside. So I'm gonna put these uh, Temoku dots on the inside and we'll see what happens. These are all one big experiment. We have no idea what's gonna happen. Exhaling keeps me connected with the process. Yeah, now that one's done and this one's done. So these can start moving like kind of out of the central channel here. So I'll, there's always a little dance happening in the studio of like, where does everything go? And in my ideal, I keep pots of similar size near each other. Height, Height exact, exactly, because that's how they'll go into the kiln. So if I do that as I go, um, just makes it easier for my future self, but there's not very much space here. So this is just going down here. Okay. So these are done. Here's one to do. So what is this? this is a, it's called, it's a Temoku, a cone six electric Tenmoku. The electric means electric fire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. This one has some dots on it already, and I think I'm gonna do something with those. Maybe I'll just put a little one dot inside each of those dots. Like I said, this is all a an experiment. Somebody's calling, huh? This one, I'm just gonna dip. Just dip the lip, exactly. Uh, one other thing that I was explaining before to Nima is that I use my iron glazes last in the layering because they're so messy and I really don't want to be having iron all over my hands as I'm doing these things. So it's great to I leave, I haven't glazed any of my pots with my black glaze, which is actually different than this. I have this Temoku and I have a black glaze. So would the Temoku be blackish? Uh, the Temoku is like a golden brown. Yes. Mm -hmm, very earthy and magical. 
And there's a way to make it silvery that I, I've never tested, but you and I can test together. What'd you say? Is this from the famous book? No, no, not that one. This is an older glaze recipe that I came along somewhere. I really like. And I actually saw another potter who I like a lot, Stephen Showalter. And he, I think he uses this same Temoku. Nice. Yeah, I really, he has amazing pots. If anybody is on Instagram and wants to go check him out, or if you live in Minnesota, I think that's where he lives. Oh, nice. He's got the most, some of the most beautiful pots I've seen out there. It's like, impressive, yeah, and I'm not that easily impressed. <laughs> So I think it says a lot. Yeah. How did you come across Steve? Just on Instagram. Oh, I'll show you his recently? pots. It's beautiful. Yeah, just beautiful. It's got these pictures are just these rainbow pictures of his are absolutely magical. I should buy one. You can share it under this video. Business expense. Oh, that's a good idea. Video. Yes, yes, yes. I think it's just stephenshowalter.com or stephenshowalterpottery.com, something along those lines. Yeah. Just to give a shout out to Fellow Potters. Totally. This one I'll do a little different. That was so thick that I'm going to just hang here for a second while it dries. If I turn the pot until you can see that it's so shiny and I need that to start drying out a little bit. Here it goes. Do you see it disappearing? Do you see it drying out? Now I can move it and it won't drip. So exhaling and I'm trying to control those so they're smaller. This is a little bit on the wet side right now. So same thing here. I just don't want to turn that before it's started to dry. I don't want to have to clean it up. You know, all those drips that you have to clean up, but you can kind of manually. Yeah, that's probably fine now. Okay, let me get one under there. And sometimes you can hold it at a certain angle where it's still like, it's not like tipped to, or if you, yeah, or if you tip it all the way over, like, and put it on the bottom so it's not going to drip anywhere. Okay, we'll dip this guy. Whoops. It, this is just a very quick dip because I'm just really using this glaze to create flux, to create a flow, to do dips. Oh, wait. Yeah. It's going to be nice, I think. So wherever the overlap is, you do that? Exactly. Over the overlaps. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it um, does something kind of magical with the, that wall, that line of glaze. Unless, like, this is a glaze that will already um, run, but to put another one on. Um, really uh, gives it a little oomph. So I like using two flux glazes in this way. Fun stuff. What makes it flux? It's just that it, in combination with other glazes, it tends to create flow. It tends to create runniness. And so, not specifically, but they probably are glazes that are more fluid in the first place. But neither of these do I use very much. Some I do. Yeah, the Temoku I do on its own. But the Waterfall Green, I just, I have to actually reformulate it. Something happened, or I lost the original recipe, or something. But it does. It doesn't. I can't use it by itself, but I can use it this way. My exhaling. Yeah. yeah. Um, it gives me control over what I'm doing. It's like a meditation in the moment where if, if you're exhaling while you're doing the thing, you're just extra connected to the process. And also exhaling in general relaxes the nervous system. So your body is more relaxed and then you can be more ninja-like, more Tai Chi, more connected, more present, more a part of things. It's just, a, it's a meditation. And it's like, for me, it like, the exhale makes me do things correctly. It just it just really helps me. Um, I'm gonna dip this one. Really helps me with precision. I always say do it on the precision moves. Like right here, I'm gonna exhale in and out. Yeah, I'm definitely loading most of these. Probably, I think tonight we'll see. Um, 
This one I will also do just a quick dip. Just the rim. See if I got the whole thing. I didn't. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh, I love doing this. Oh my gosh. This is so exciting because we really are at the end now of glazing. So this is it. Then they get loaded. So if I, this is a way that is like helps production is this one dries upside down while this one is going. And then this one dries upside down while this one is going. Yeah. Okay. So I, now at this point, it's been upside down long enough that I know that it's fine. And that one I'm going to stripe. Okay. This is fine. Okay. Oh, I did just say that, didn't I? I'll do both. <laughs> a little extra for this one. Yep. It's going to be nice. You know, something else that's nice to do with these is I do this on the raw clay, but I've never done it as a glaze treatment. Just, this kind of landscapey thing I put in sometimes a little, like a little sun or moon or whatever that winds up being. And uh, yeah, we'll see what that looks like on glaze. I've never done that before. I used to have this whole style based around that pattern right there. Um, okay, this one I'm going to dip. Dip it good. Are we on the live now? That's cool. Who else is here? Well, Ruth just made a comment. Cool. I love Ruth's comments. Ruth is a great commenter. I have to say I really love Ruth, and I really appreciate Ruth for uh, – which Ruth is it? Drury, Drury. or Sax? Yep. Drury. Yeah. Both of them are, like, really so beautifully engaged, and I just so, so, so appreciate it. Ruth um, was talking about the breathing that you're doing, and she said uh, they'll have to try it. Yes. And, uh, really and trying to be yes. Then you're probably holding your breath, tightening up your muscles, and then you can't do a good job because you're like in fear. The whole body's like, I hope I do this. <laughs> you know, that's an exaggeration. But you know, the opposite is just to relax, and that's like my main spiritual practice is actually relaxation, especially in the body. But. Yeah, relaxation in the body is, is my main spiritual practice. That's Realization process. process, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I teach the meditation. Ruth, why don't you come sometime? Come to my meditation group or be in my pleasure boot camp coming up in January. Pleasure boot camp is a reality at the end of January. This came off of something. I kind of felt like I saw that happen before. Let's leave this right here just in case we find. Yeah, I thought I saw it like out of the corner of my eye ninja style. <laughs> ninja Jedi. What are some other things? Kung Fu Master style. Yeah. I'm going to just do these on the top here. That way I don't have to worry about them. Dripping, and they'll go down hopefully both sides. That'll be fun to see. Oh, nice. We'll see. It might be that I have to do whoopsie, <laughs> do some bigger. <laughs> it's getting watery. I don't know what happened. Just all of a sudden, it's getting really watery. Yeah. Okay. Do like that. I'll let this dry before I clean those up, but I might do that anyway. Let me get some more. It's just like at the end. Sometimes at the end it starts spooging. I should have caught that with the first one. Okay. Yeah. Got spooged. <sighs> exhale all the time. If you exhale, that's all you have to do to learn how to meditate. And especially in the studio. This is where I learned it. I've been doing this forever. Somebody taught, T Tenbin, T, taught it to me um, for throwing, for doing that first, doing pulls as you exhale on the pull. But I translated it to freaking every single thing I do. <laughs> Even in the house all day long, exhale, 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 relax, exhale, relax. That's my spiritual practice. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that's enough. Awesome. Aw. I give you a thumbs up right back. I give everybody a thumbs up. 
I want to say awesome job, everybody being a human. It's not easy. Yeah. Awesome job out there being humans. It is not easy. That's wisdom from the wheel. Yeah, I'll drop it back into. So these things will all become part of a shop glaze later, a studio glaze. So this will, that it, this, what, what settles into the bottom from here, because all it is is glaze and water, mm -hmm. will get transferred into that metal bowl. This is the master, but not this one, because this is going to be more irony. So it'll be a different, it'll be, an, yeah, I have two shop glazes. One is like the greens, reds, and purples. The other is the darks or neutrals. Shino and my black and the Temoku. They all become, and clear can go in that too, either one. Okay, not great, but not terrible, but better, we can say. <laughs> and hopefully this is in better shape now. Yeah. So if I can turn it over and it, I can tell, with, okay, this is really good little tip right here. Pay attention, everyone. If you want the glaze to be thick, right, like that you can use it so it's not going to be like all over the place, turn it upside down without giving it any pressure. And if it drips slowly like that, I can handle that. I can be in control of that. If it just runs right out, you don't, it has to be thicker than that to, to work with precision with, a, um, with one of these bulb syringes. At the end, you want to pay a little extra attention and kind of get it in between and like medium sized <laughs> here. Okay, so that goes there for now. And here's something that, let's try it on this for just for fun, why not? Let's see, keep it on the rim here. The more I can get it right on the center of this rim, I gotta activate the breath. Give it a little tip so it, yeah, so I stay in control, but it is getting a little watery now. Why does that happen? Shake, shake, shake. Shake out the water. Oh. So this is hopefully going to squeak down both the inside and the outside. Exactly. We'll see. Cool, huh? Very cool, very cool. We'll see. It's a totally new concept, new design. I had no idea what I would do with these bowls, but now it's kind of all one version. Is rolled rims. Rolled rims, exactly. Yeah. And, and also the faceted mugs, these ones, never made them before. No idea what they're going to do. So we'll see. There's one more bowl right here. Okay, great. Thanks, names. Great. And there's two okay. little cups. Great. And then we'll be ready to load the kiln. Ah! So on. here, this one, easy peasy. Check it out. Every once in a while, you have one that's just like, oh my God, and we're done. Ooh. Yeah, and that's it. It's good. That's going to be good. I'll show you my bowls. It's nice when there's more in, on the inside, actually, like that. It's really good. Yeah, it's really good. Really, 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 really good. Amazing. Oh, look at this guy all by itself over here. Okay, whoops. Let me bring this one in real quick. And I think I'll just, uh-oh. Hey. <laughs> Gotta watch those fingers. Okay, perfect. And then this, I gotta clean my finger before I do anything. I'm gonna um, scrape it off. Yeah, but I'll get as much as I can off. It's, I think it looks fine, it doesn't look too hard. Yeah, see how, if I use it like a sharp angle, it just takes off that very top layer. And if I breathe, exhale, even better. 
yeah, yeah. And a little bit doesn't matter. A little bit's fine. At least we hope so. <laughs> we have no idea. I have no idea what this glaze is. Some of them are much more sensitive than others. I think it'll be fine. Green, actually, this could be green and it actually could make a difference. So I'll just go a little bit further with my finger here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can always clean it up if you're careful. But if, if you're not careful and you make a mistake and you don't know what color your glaze is, which I'm like, I think this might be green. I could figure it out. One way that I can figure it out is... I don't want to do it, but if, if I wasn't live, I might lick my finger and touch the glaze. And when it's wet, here, look, we can do it with the water. Touch the glaze. And sometimes when it's wet, you can see a little bit more of what the glaze used to look like. But now I'm just getting it more irony. So I think we'll quit that job. But basically, sometimes adding water to certain of my clay, of my glazes, I can tell what they are. I think it might be green. But anyway, so now we don't even know. Oh, yeah, let me put these over here. And then I'll take these little guys. This one's so cute. And let's do something. Let's do some of these dots with this one. And I think I'll do it uh, like right along the rim to kind of like highlight the waviness of the rim. Yeah, like cup, one on cup. the, yeah, both. It's a mug, it's a cup. Right. The great mug versus cup controversy. It began one night in Amy's studio. <laughs> right, Amy. Last one. Okay, yeah. striper. That one's so cute. Look, oh my God, aren't you in love with that little mug? Oh my God, it's so little, it's so cute. I love this mug, I'm gonna have to keep it for myself. Some of them, you know, you just have to. I wonder which is the bowl that folded in half. I wonder if I signed it any differently. I hope that I put some kind of, I hope I did, usually I would. Oh yeah, 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 that's true. I hope I did. Anyway, that was so strange. Okay. Right. I couldn't believe I happened to be filming at that moment, too. Oh, here. I just found something. So, here. I, I'm going to say it. I say it every time I do a live, but I'm going to say it right now. The best time to fix something is when you find it. My finger just touched this mug for some reason. Maybe I saw that little bump, but I'm just going to fix it. Just going to shave that down right now, just in case it's like an imp impurity or something it's just a little extra extra glaze i think but, but still been... i found it i fixed it yeah find it when you fix it, fix it when you find, find it. it fix it find it when you fix it fix it when you find it and find it when you fix it no 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 it's the other way you're right <laughs> fix it when you find it right there okay are we done with our yep. part one this is the end of part one and then suspense what will happen next take them for a tour of the studio nima show them what's going on here it's crazy moments here there's a lot that must happen now yep much must happen right now and so we're gonna stop the video and then start it again yeah, we got our posts ready. We are reds to go. Right. Bye, Amy. Bye, Amy. <laughs> See you soon.